There is nothing that connects a person to Allah like that time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He descends at that time in a way that befits Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person has not told the truth. They have lied when they claim to love me. But when the night comes, he sleeps on my appointments. He sleeps when I come down to meet him, when, I, when I'm ready to listen to that person, ready to listen to him or her. And you say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, isn't it that every lover spends some time with their lover? And he says, here I am looking out to my servants when the night comes, looking out to my lovers, those that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and tomorrow when they come to me, then I will satisfy their eyes. I will cool their eyes. I will fill their hearts with my Jannah. Those same people that I love. You want to be from those who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's that only time. No distractions. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something small. And the greatest thing you can ask, if a person tastes the sweetness of certain voluntary deeds, not only can it help them be more consistent with the obligatory deeds, it can help revive the spirit of those obligatory deeds. In fact, which is what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said about Surah Al-Muzzammil. If you read Surah Al-Muzzammil, the third revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a page and a half. The second half is one ayah, is one ayah. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that Allah withheld the second part of Al-Muzzammil for an entire year from us. Meaning what? When Allah first revealed to us, Ya ayyuha al-Muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi wa rattil al-Qur'an tartila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and to the ummah by extension to stand up and pray at night to stand up and pray a significant portion of the night and to recite a significant portion of what was revealed. Aisha radiallahu anha said, for a year, the obligation upon us was Qiyamul Layl. Meaning Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer was an obligation on the ummah for an entire year before the obligation of the five prayers came later on. Similar to how we have ayyam and ma'dudat, some days that were, obligate, that, that were obligatory for fasting. But when Ramadan came, they became voluntary, like the fasting of Arafah and Ashura and other days like that. Okay, so with the prayer of Qiyam al-Layl, she says that for a whole year, and this was the most difficult time in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and by the Ummah who was facing persecution and had no community, which is one of the wisdoms that the ulama mentioned. They didn't have a community to gather. They, they had no masjid. They had Dar al-Arqam to sneak into and to study and to do what they could. But everyone really had to pray by themselves. For a whole year, she said, we all prayed until our feet would swell. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the second part of it, which rendered the night prayer voluntary. But the Prophet ﷺ still maintained the habits. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ still would pray until his feet would swell. And of course, many of the companions would maintain that habit. And there was a wisdom to that. That when you are struggling, this practice is not just a means of giving you great perspective and great connection to your Lord, but it also provides a unique level of relief, of hem, of stress and anxiety. And that's something that's very unique about this particular habit, this particular good deed when you read about it, the way that the companions and the Salaf and the pious predecessors speak about this act in particular as being one that removes stress. You stand up at night, you have a direct connection to your Lord. It's quiet. You don't have a meeting coming up, right? You, 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 can, you can create the scene, set the scene. The kids are most likely sleeping. They should be sleeping at that time. It's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the rules of Qiyamul Layl are not as uh, rigid. And I don't say that in a negative way, but with the, the maktubah, with the, with the mandatory prayers, there are certain things you can and can't do, but with the Qiyam, you can spend the whole night with one or two ayat. You can allocate certain time to your sajda, certain time to your standing up. It's a moment of joy. And when the scholars spoke about it, that's what they say. And it's very interesting because just like with fasting, you know, you always start reading about these studies to try to make you feel better about your faith. And you don't need to, right? The benefits of fasting. It just, it, it, it feels good, right? When you hear about the physical benefits and things of that sort as well. Basically, these studies confirming what you already have been acting upon because it was prescribed by your Lord. And so you read these studies about mindfulness meditation. 20 minutes a day, 20, 25 minutes a day, but don't do it all at one time. 
because you need to break up your mindfulness meditation throughout the day because it will reset the cycle for you and get you back to where you need to be and put put you know between those breaks those meditation breaks everything in perspective and it will improve the quality of your sleep and if you improve the quality of your sleep then you're energized during the day and I'm like these people just need salah <laughs> they just need prayer we already know, we have something prescribed to us that is so beautiful that doesn't mean that times of dua and dhikr and introspection are not good as well but salah really offers that vehicle and improves the quality of a person's day and a person's night and we when you think about the unique stress relief Abu Sulaiman al-Darani rahimahullah ta'ala he said you know people spend the entire night binge watching movies or uh, you know hanging out and there are halal ways to spend time as well right but you know there is a certain relaxation I need some relief tonight so I'm gonna spend some time and I'm going to just you know, kill some time and feel good. And sometimes, if it's halal, it's good for you. But what he was saying is, that people who have established this night prayer, even if it's a small portion, that they are in more joy than the people of lahu with their lahu. Now we're not even talking about people of sin. Right, that's a whole nother level. And he said, it's as if I could see my heart laughing when a person enjoys that night of prayer. That had it not been for Qiyam al I really wouldn't see any use in living in this life. I, I don't think about anything in life as giving me as much joy as I do Qiyam al-Layl. Thabit al-Bunani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to say, I have not found anything in my life that is just sweeter, gives more pleasure. That's how they're speaking about it. Then Qiyam al-Layl. Al-Fudayl rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he said that I love the night prayer, or I love the night because that's when I get to meet my Lord. That's when I get to spend time with Allah. And we were talking about the last few weeks, how people can be exhausting. He said, in the daytime, I'm not so crazy about because I have to meet the creation of Allah. Dealing with the Lord at night, dealing with people during the day, there is a peace and a tranquility that comes from that, that makes what comes throughout the day more bearable. And that joy is freshening. That joy is replenishing. That joy is meaningful. It's, you know, people are searching for it here and there. And it's in those few moments at night. And I'm going to get to this at the end, but that doesn't mean praying all night. That means those few moments, that 10, 15 minutes, that 20 minutes of recalibrating every single night, at some point in the night, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala said, how come the people that sleep the least at night have the freshest faces during the day? It's as if they're, they're energized, subhanAllah.